Armageddon is a sci-fi comedy horror film released on April 20th, 2015. The film was written by Jacques M. Thielen and Howie Doohan, who also directed the film. The film stars Jacques M. Thielen, Eileen Burnside, Pinky Brainwise, E.B. Buxner, and Howie Doohan. If you're currently wondering to yourself why you've never heard of this movie before, uh, don't. The classification this movie falls under means it isn't liable to pop up as recommended viewing, and there's a good reason for that. But since there are some well-meaning folks out there patient enough to give the bumbling B-movie fair of the world a chance to prove itself, we must naturally ask, what the hell is this movie? And what am I getting myself into by watching it? In this review, we're going to be reaching a little further back into the goodies cabinet in hopes of finding just the right spirit to survive just the wrong movie. The story begins with a flash animated version of the intro from Heavy Metal as Lamalians assemble an intergalactic invasion force of horse trailers, with one of said trailers crashing on Earth. Net back to reality. We see the landed llama arrive at the house of the youngest old couple in film history, where the Lamalian promptly reduces them to catch up. After observing a super significant plot thread about a team researching the crash site that will totally definitely be important later, we flash to the family of the deceased couple, composed of two teenage 30-year-olds. In the wake of the service, the two kids go to the house where their grandparents died, alone with only an albino-eyed camelid as company. Being the good prototypical mean girl, the sister disobeys her mother's wish of not having a party and proceeds to invite what I can only assume is every single living person in the county to come by the house and drink some cool, refreshing bush lager. As the party devolves into a series of fever dreams mixed in with small talk straight out of a health class VHS tape, the Lamalian starts making its rounds, killing people with its laser face and its inner Tyson fury. But things really heat up when the partiers jump into the hot tub without inviting Llama Bro to the party. As one may imagine, this was a bad idea for the partiers. So after watching half the county's goose get cooked, the remaining... Um, characters step outside to clear their head. After some unsuccessful attempts to call for help, a couple of the party people get transformed into high-pressure ketchup hoses, causing people to run for the safety of the dark and desolate woods. As is typically the case in these movies, one of the people is slowly getting transformed into a Lamalian, so the others tell him to hang back and get impregnated by the real Lamalian while they go check out the super advanced horse trailer. Though one of the three survivors tries to go to bat for his friends, he gets distracted trying to deliver an epic monologue. Though we have not fought valiantly, many of our friends have perished. Let them not die in vain! With this space stick, we will avenge them and we will win this wrestle between Earth and- Leading to him getting the red shirt treatment from their Lamalian pursuer. While the survivors hide in a barn, their dad shows up with a boomstick and evaporates the human turned Lamalian so he doesn't have to watch it give birth in front of him anymore. After busting some moves that would make Bruce Lee quiver, the dad ends up getting mortally incapacitated by the Lamalian. When it seems all hope is lost for our lovable brother-sister duo though, the dad pulls an Uno reverse card on the Lamalian and valiantly takes it out to pasture with a combine. In the final moments of the movie, a dying father takes the time to pick favorites and to cry his harlot ex-wife before slipping away, leaving the kids to gaze up at the stars and await an uncertain sequel. You know, at first glance, you'd almost think this just might be ridiculous enough to work. Almost. However, first impressions aren't everything, and it doesn't take long to realize this is less of a corny, underbaked attempt at filmmaking, and more of an overindulged shitpost with shameless sponsorship. Which reminds me, we need to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, because without their support, it wouldn't be possible to bring you the continuous entertainment that you love. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Today's sponsor is Raid Shadow Legends. One thing you gotta give props for is the animated segments. Though the style is pretty basic, the animation is still clean and well put together. 
The intro animation does a pretty good job of establishing what the story is with the Llama Terror from outer space, and it manages to capture and hold your attention pretty well. Even the animated segment of the frat bro turned llama thing getting attacked by the Lamalian is pretty well put together, when you ignore the fact that they put it in there to save money in the props and effects department. With that being said though, it's about the only part of the movie that presents something resembling quality. Every other part of the movie is just... Uh... The pace of the movie is kind of like being a passenger with a teenager who's gotten behind the wheel of a car for the first time. Most of the stretches aren't particularly eventful, and sometimes you might even dare say they're doing good. But then there's that one thing that happens where you spend the next five minutes boring holes into their head going, what the hell was that? Or more likely you'll just end up in a situation where your seatbelt compresses your ribcage into your spine. Seems like a shot panning over a graveyard that transitioned into the family leaving the funeral before hard cutting to the absent father giving a lady the not-so-mechanical bull ride treatment are the bread and butter that propel the story forward, with almost half the movie being centered around the house party of blood, sweat, and beers. And trust me when I say, when you get to this party, you'll be begging for the sweet release of llama-induced death. The editing really takes that waiting room level of wait time for llama carnage and spices it up by occasionally slapping you in the face with a chair. The fact it takes 2 minutes and 30 phone calls for the sister character to set up a party before cutting to a research team trying to be amazed by a horse trailer before... that is an indication that the people in this movie chugging back beers like their lives depend on it are more in tune with things than you might think. Actually, you know what? Just hang on a minute. The use of the camera on top of the editing choices is an element that really breathes life into this movie, doing wonders in defining the style this movie sets out to create for itself. The artistic intelligence behind decisions such as trying to have the actors literally swallow the camera, having one guy change his shirt literally every scene transition, completely forgetting one of your occasionally bearded actors is even in the film, and having not one, but two Lamageddon title cards reaches levels of understanding far beyond what I ever thought possible for the silver screen. It's pretty apparent that the dialogue here is mostly, if not totally, improvised, but the difference between your usual boring Oscar-winning sellout improv like Joe Pesci or some shit, and the next phase of interactive evolution presented in Lamageddon is all but plain to see. Well, it makes sense because it's uh, it came through the northern quadrant and crash landed here. So, think it's a pretty good assumption. The acting we witness here is completely. <laughs> it's, 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 it's like you, you know it's. <laughs> Just, just watch. But mom, you said you wouldn't tell anyone. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. It's just that your sister cares about you. <laughs> you did so good. Yeah, I'm a man now. <laughs> How's it going? I'm Trent. Mel's boyfriend. It's a pretty nice script you got there. Yes. Yes, it is. So is yours. <laughs> Measure your dicks. Some other time, then. Can't knock it, man. <laughs> Those guys are just having the time of their life. <laughs> the soundtrack is a playlist that ping-pongs between PS1 horror game music and royalty-free YouTube creepypasta music for maximum creepy factor. 
Though between being caught in the gaze of a spooky Lamalian versus the immense amount of acting channeled towards portraying a regular house party, I'd say the party probably wins the competition of places I don't want to be. The one exception to the intentional lack of uniqueness, though, is of course the credits song, that generously sings out a synopsis for anyone who checked out between the start and end of the movie. If we're being honest, though, what came first? The chicken, singing about llamas in a studio? Or the egg, that hatches llamas for some reason? Seriously, I kinda wanna know. It comes as a genuine surprise, though, that Heinz Ketchup isn't noted as one of the specially thanked companies given how much of their product went into the practical effects department. Like, come on, the actors spend the entire last third of the movie looking like sun-dried tomatoes. Where's the appreciation for what brought their craft to life? The same tragic fate befalls iMovie, as the use of their industry-leading digital effects also goes unmentioned in the credits. The hardworking folks over at Apple did not become a trillion-dollar enterprise just to be met with such ignorant disregard. One neat little visual the movie does implement, though, that is bound to get the viewer's attention, is the implementation of a scaled-down, sped-up copy of the movie that plays during the credits. I'm telling you, this movie takes no survivors in making sure you watch it. Tip of the cap, though, for being persistent. That's the kind of winning spirit that'll take you far in this line of work. The final rating for... whatever this is supposed to be... is 2 out of 10. All you really need to know is that there's a llama, he's an absolute gem, and he kills people. Everything else movie-related, like acting, dialogue, visuals, and whatever else, need not apply for the Oscar nod. Or the approval of the people nod. Or the nod of the head that indicates we know what the hell you were even doing in the first place. Credit where it's due, though. The hard lesson was well learned. Bring on the sequel, fellas. That's all we've got for today. Thanks for stopping by. If you feel it's worth the while, consider liking, sharing, or subscribing. And if there's a movie you want to see reviewed, leave your suggestions down in the comments. Also, if you're feeling especially generous, consider following me on Twitter, at IUntrained, for updates and other nonsense. There's plenty more to come, so if you care enough to return for it, then I'll see you when I see you.